Hello everyone and welcome to Stan the Wine Man TV. I am your host, Stan Rutan, and this is the Blue Collar Wine Show, where I help you spend your wine dollars wisely. We are going to do a third episode on Christmas wines, in particular wines that go with prime rib. Now you may ask, well Stan, I don't have prime rib with my Thanksgiving dinner. Okay, that's fine. Look at my playlist. I think you can, if you do ham, look up some of the Pinot Noir episodes. I look at some of the Oregon episodes and you'll find some wines for your Christmas ham. There are a couple of wines here that might work with lamb if that's what you so desire to do. It's, it's, it's tough these days because not everybody does traditional things. But the only time I ever cook prime rib is at Christmas. So I want to find the perfect wines, perhaps depending on your palate, <laughs> for prime rib. And these are four wines that I've selected specifically for that purpose. So these are my picks for prime rib dinner. We did a Merlot episode, which was great. We did some uh, budget wines, uh, which was also good. But now we're looking at four specific wines that I went to the store and purchased to do this episode because if I were looking for specific wines for prime rib, this, these are, this is where I'd go, and for specific reasons. So we're going to start off right away with the uh, 2015 Chateau Hochat La Rose Fransac Bordeaux. Now this was my number one wine of the year last year, my top 40, under $20. I'm not sure if I'm going to get to that this year. It's been a weird freaking year, as you know. I'm actually thinking of slimming it down to top 20 under $20, just because 40 is a lot. You know, I mean, you know, people, do they have the patience to go through that whole list? I mean, I know Wine Spectator, did, Spectator does top 100, but, you know, not everybody looks at all of that. So this is the Chateau Hochat. They now are on 2016, which I've also tried, which is also a very excellent wine. So this is 100% Merlot because it's from the right bank of Bordeaux in Fransac, where they do almost entirely Merlot-based wines. And my last episode, the kind of nice segue from my last episode where I talked about Merlot, uh, how good it is with prime rib, this would also be great. Now, the reason I'm doing this one, this rolls in at $17. There you go. $17. is because if you have a crowd at your house, whether it's a crowd or not a crowd, I know a lot of people are not going to do a crowd this year because of all that's going on. But if you have a few people over your house and they are wine aficionados, they are really big into wine, this would be a great wine to bring to the table. $17, not a huge investment per bottle, and I think you're going to be um, rewarded with a lot of high fives about this wine. Let's see what we get on the nose. Currants and tobacco right off the bat. Just a bit of earth, not a lot. Kind of has that sweet current notes, which I really like. Let's see what we get on the palate. I love this wine. And, and trust me, the 16 represents this winery as well as a 15. Still a little youthful, the 16, but still, you get leather, earth, tobacco, get a little bit of spice, smooth but structured tannins. Everything you would expect from a Bordeaux without paying a huge amount of money. Now, I have the only you know, uh, curious thing about this Bordeaux is it doesn't show a lot of pencilette. There's just a little bit of pencilette, which is a very common characteristic of Bordeaux. There's a little bit of it here, but not a ton. I like the earth. I like the leather. Good acidity. Good structure. Uh, the fruit is there, but not the prominent part of this wine. Talk about a great wine with any type of roast, whether it be prime rib or pot roast or stew, anything like that, this would be excellent with.
I see why I made this my number one wine last year. Uh, it's certainly an excellent wine, certainly a very good representation of Fransac. And uh, yeah, great roast wine. So if you're, if you're having folks over that are more into wine, more into old world wines, this would be a great one. Don't be afraid to buy the 16 that's available. Uh, great Expectations is a distributor, so if you're not here in Friday Harbor where I have it, you can go to any of your stores and say, hey, do you have from you know, Chateau Hochat? 2016, you will be pleasantly surprised. Both great vintages. Um, I think I've tried a few wines this year that might usurp the 16 as my number one wine of the year, but still has its place in my heart for a great value Bordeaux. If you're having people over and you want to share a little bit, this would be the one to do it. I'm going to go straight up A- minus on that one. I think it's an excellent Bordeaux. Okay, let's move on. Winery of the Year a couple of years ago, Longship Cellars. This is their 2018 Starship Cabernet Sauvignon Columbia Valley. This rolls in at $20. So I think all of you would agree that Cab is a good play for prime rib, steak, whatever you're doing. And uh, I really like their 16, which I think is the one that I tasted initially. Then their 17 came out. That was really good. And now I'm really digging the 18 as well. Let's see what we get on the nose. Licorice, a little bit of parazine, you know, a little bit of herbaceousness coming through. Lots of currants. I really like the licorice and um, even a touch of caramel, slight caramel notes are coming through on this one. And, you know, not all of you are going to detect that, but I'm getting it a little bit. The craft caramel, you know what I'm talking about? Because I had a neighbor that I used to, a, an older gentleman, I used to go over to his house all the time when I was a kid. He was a ham radio operator, and I just always have loved talking to older people. It's a thing. I love older people, and I'm getting there myself, so I hope some of you younger ones like older people. <laughs> Yeah, just a touch of tobacco and caramel and uh, currants and the paracetamol is blown off just a bit. But I really like the licorice notes on this. Big time licorice notes. Let's see what we get on the palate. This is in my top 10 $20 cabs. I should start doing a list like that. Currants, tobacco, good balance across the palate. Um, a little bit of spice at the backside. The caramel sneaks in just barely underneath. Hardly offensive. I'm not a big fan of caramel on my calves, but this is really nicely balanced. Smooth but a little edginess on the tannins. Great food wine, approachable now. You could drink this now. You could put it away for a couple of years. I wouldn't go more than five on this one. I love this wine. I love this winery. Kyle and Cassie Welch, you know, hats off to them for doing such a good job and improving each year on the quality of their wines. I've never been disappointed with a long ship seller's wine. They change the label a little bit on this. Uh, shows their Norwegian heritage. Just to show you one more time. Yeah, just solid wine. $20. You know, and it's really not as easy as you think to find a really good quality $20 cab from Washington State. And this is it. Am I a little prejudiced? Perhaps. But a great, great prime rib wine. $20, $16, so, you know, that's a nice price range, I think, when you're talking about Christmas dinner. You know, you can go higher than that, of course. Do whatever you freaking want to do. It's up to you. But, seriously, that 20 and under range is really, really nice. Another varietal I like to go to is Syrah for um, Christmas. I think I have three Washington State wines here and one from France. It's pretty cool. 
This is the uh, 2017 Nathan Gray Syrah Denhode Vineyard Yakima Valley, one of my favorite Appalachians in Washington State, and this rolls in at $17. There you go. Syrah is such a good play. Um, I know it's suffering a little bit in sales. Though we won't get into the whole Shiraz Syrah thing. But I really like to find good value Syrahs from Washington State. This I, I picked this one because I've been very happy with it in the future in the past. Hopefully in the future. Very happy with it in the past. And it's been um, a good play. Uh, 17 bucks. Yeah. Nathan Gray Syrah. I believe this is distributed by Crew Selections. Crew Selections. Uh, out of Seattle. Let's see what we get on the nose. A little meat marinade. Touch of stink. Which is kind of cool. So now we're talking again. Your wine geek friends that are coming over, you're going to share this wine with them. My lights seem like they're a little bit off right now. I'm going to just turn this one a little bit. Sorry for the. Just... Yeah. Okay. That's better. Yeah. That's better. A little bit of uh, plum action on this one. Even a hint of pomegranate and tobacco. Let's see what we get on the palate. Funny thing is I'm not getting any smoke on the nose. That's very common with uh, Syrah, but not on this one. Yeah, nice balance. Almost a eucalyptus thing, but not really quite. It kind of hedges that way. Um, I get like un a little underripe boysenberry plum, not underripe plum, red plum, a little underripe boysenberry. Red flowers, which is really cool. This is a little light, lighter than the 16. This is a 17, but I still think it can hold up to prime rib. I think it's a really nice Syrah in the, in the sense that you don't get the huge amount of bacon fat that might off, you know, put some people off. And we're talking if you have a few people over. I know you're going to have a big crowd because all this stuff going on around us, but you might have a few family friend and friends over. By the way, I forgot to grade the uh, Starship. I'm going to go B plus, A minus on the Starship cab from Longship Sellers. I love the red flowers on this. This, is, this reminds me a bit of a, um, a Crow's Hermitage. Good acidity, but it's very well balanced with the wine. Nice tobacco notes. That underripe, little bit like, have you ever picked a blackberry that, not quite there, but almost, and you eat it? I like those, actually. I don't know how you feel about that. Uh, maybe you could tell me, how do you, do, do you like underripe blackberries, or underripe boysenberries, or whatever? Just a little bit, not a lot. That's what I'm getting here, with the red flowers. Good acidity, good balance, great food wine, just saying. Awesome food wine. I remember, uh, just I think when we did the last episode, we did the Barnard Griffin Merlot. Good acidity on that one. Definitely an excellent food wine. There's a flavor profile coming through that I'm not quite getting my hands on. I'm sorry, guys. Maybe a little pomegranate, cherry, underripe blackberry berry, whatever you want to say, and plum, for sure. Nice balance, nice and fresh, good acidity, great food wine. This would be excellent with prime rib. Really um, like this one, depending on how much seasoning you put on. If you put a ton of seasoning, this might be a little weak for that. I would go with the Cab or the Bordeaux, but I really like this wine a lot. Um, really digging it. I'm going to go BB plus on that. Let's move on. 
Now I picked this one particularly because you have a few people over, they're not necessarily huge into the wine world, they love wine. You have to have a little bit of a crowd pleaser and I can't think of a better crowd pleaser than the Thurston Wolf Petite Syrah 2018 Horse Heaven Hills Zephyr Ridge Vineyard. This rolls in at $18. So again, we're all staying around 20 and under, which I think is important. You know, prime rib isn't cheap. So you, you're having a few friends over. People that don't drink a lot of wine, but they do enjoy wine. My memory of this one is that it's a little fruit forward, but still very excellent quality. Let's see what we get on the nose. This has a little earth going on. Definitely deep current notes. Black plum, currants. Just a touch of tobacco. A little bit of bark underneath. Like the nose on this one. By the way, Petite Syrah, different from Syrah, but it's related. Uh, I believe it is a cross between Palauerson and Syrah. And it's, so it's been called Petite Syrah. Um, spelled a little, a little bit differently. A lot of people mistake this for Syrah. But, of course, Stag's Leap made Petite Syrah famous, really did. Let's see what we get on the palate. Really rich current notes, but they're they're not over the top. I'm not liking the lighting in here for some reason. Anyway. Sorry. Um, deep current notes. A little black plum. A little bit of spice. Smooth tannins. A little underneath you get a little bit of earth and bark which I like but this is a crowd pleaser this is what I call a crowd pleaser run you bust this open with a bunch of people that are not big wine people but they like wine you are going to hit a home run with this baby The tannins are very approachable, but they get a little attitude at the finish, which you want. We're talking prime rib here. A lot of fat. This has good acidity. This would be a nice match. So you're matching wine with food, but at the same time making a lot of people happy. Even get a little black tea. Love the edginess of the tannins. Now those will match up well with the proteins of the meat. Always remember, tannins and meat proteins work together to create a nice um, concert. They work in concert with each other and you get this nice harmony when you're eating the meal. So, there you go. My four recommendations for prime rib dinner, which should be available this is a Dickerson Distributing uh, up in Bellingham. I think it's readily available, the Thurston Wolf. Nathan Gray, Crew Selections. Uh, hopefully your wine, local wine store carries that one. It's a very good Syrah. Nice, you know, food Syrah. Longship Cellars, I think it's available, readily available. And also Chateau Hochat Grape Expectations. Remember those names so you can go to your local guy. I know that I'm doing this on a Sunday. Christmas is not that far away. But it might give you a chance to kind of search it out. Just Google it. Find out which store near you carries it. And go there and buy it. They're all 20 and under. Which is a great price point for, thanks, for Christmas dinner. Thanks for taking a little time out of your day. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Hit the little bell, I think. There's a little bell that tells you when my episodes are coming out. That's very cool. You keep watching. And I'll keep helping you spend your wine dollars wisely.